The C390 Millennium has become popular with its recent success in the Netherlands and Portugal. This medium-sized military transport aircraft is the only sensible competitor of the C-130J Super Hercules in the international market. This story reminds us the competition between the C-160 Transal and C-130 Hercules. But also there are so many differences. As the weapon detective, we are investigating the C-390, a brilliant initiative of the Brazilian Embraer. The C-390 is an intriguing medium-sized military transport aircraft. The wise decisions of the Embraer in the past have paved the way for such a clever project. At present, the C-390 is attracting many potential customers. But will the future of this aircraft be bright? Let's briefly look at the C-390's history and features before seeking the answer to this question. In 2005, Embraer began a study on a transport aircraft with the wing and General Electric CF-34 turbofan engine of the Embraer 190. It's still unclear whether this project is for direct military or civil use. But one year later, the company directly began to work on a military tactical transport aircraft design, which would have a similar size to the C-130 Hercules. In 2007, Embraer announced the project worldwide. Initially, the aircraft was named C-390. Yet the name was later changed to KC-390 since it would provide air refueling for other aircraft. In 2008, Brasilia decided to fund the project and considered acquiring 22 to 30 aircraft. Initially, Embraer considered the Pratt & Whitney PW6000 and the Rolls-Royce BR715 turbofan engines for the new aircraft. But after a careful assessment, it has chosen the IAEV 2500 as the power plan. Brazil awarded Embraer with a contract to develop and build two prototypes on April 14, 2009. The company, which enjoyed government support, also began to seek possible international partners. After 2010, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Czechia and Portugal joined the project and many foreign subcontractors have also become part of it. For example, the Czech Aero Water Hody Company would design and produce the rear fuselage section with the loading ram, the leading edge of the wing and all hatches of the cabin. The Portuguese OGMA company, whose 45% of the shares are owned by Embraer, has become responsible for the central fuselage section. The Argentine Fabrica Argentina de Aviones company would supply the tail cone, cargo door and landing gear doors. Rockwell Collins would develop some avionics including the cargo handling and aerial delivery system. BAE Systems has become the subcontractor for the fly-by-wire primary flight control system. The first prototype of the KC-390 made its maiden flight on February 3, 2015. Initially, the test phase was scheduled for 18 to 24 months, but the economic problems in Brazil caused an 8-month extension in the program. The in-flight refueling trials began on February 19, 2017. After 1900 flight hours in testing, the KC-390 received Brazilian Civil Type Certification on October 23, 2018. The first mass-produced KC-390 made its first flight on October 9, 2018. The Brazilian Air Force took this aircraft into service on September 4, 2019. A month later, Embraer announced that it would henceforth market the new aircraft as the C-390 Millennium. Due to financial austerity measures caused by the COVID-19 epidemic, Brasilia reduced its C-390 order from 28 to 22 in 2021. At least six aircraft will be delivered permanently configured for aerial refueling missions. But all remaining aircraft will also have a design that can quickly be adapted to this role. We should mention that Boeing and Embraer signed a cooperation agreement in 2012. In 2019, they even announced a joint venture called Boeing Embraer Defense for marketing the C-390. Through this cooperation, Embraer would get a chance to reach a bigger market and use Boeing's worldwide service support facilities. On the other hand, Boeing would be able to compete with Lockheed Martin, one of its biggest rivals, in the medium-sized military transport aircraft market. Yet, Boeing terminated this joint venture in 2020. The C-390's fly-by-wire flight control system with active side sticks allows load factor up to 3G. The wing flaps have hydraulic controls. There is also an electrical system as a backup. The nose section is short and sloping downwards, increasing the pilot's vision. The C-390 has commercial standard cockpit avionics with the Rockwell Collins Proline Fuzzy Suite, which is also used by Embraer's Legacy 450 and 500 business jets. 
The pilot and co-pilot have head-up displays for the enhanced vision system with four cameras. The cockpit is compatible for use with night vision goggles. Thanks to its extended slats, idle thrust and flight spoilers extended to 40 degrees, the C390 can descend at a rate of 9000 feet per minute at its 560 km per hour maximum indicated airspeed. With its flaps at 40 degrees, the aircraft's stall speed is 193 km per hour. The aircraft can take off and land from semi-prepared runways with pits as deep as 40 cm. The cargo bay is 18.5 meters long, 3.45 meters wide and 2.95 meters high. The C390 has a 26 ton maximum load capacity. So, it can carry two M113 tracked armored personnel carriers, one VPTP MR Gorani wheeled armored vehicle, one UH-60 helicopter, 74 stretchers with life support equipment, up to 80 soldiers or 66 paratroopers with full gear. The C390 has a computer-aided release system produced by Rockwell Collins. So the pilot or co-pilot can control the rear ramp. This feature eliminates the need for a loadmaster. Thanks to the 912E fuel delivering system produced by Carbon PLC, the C390 can refuel other aircraft in flight through two wing-mounted probes and drogue pods. It can deliver up to 1500 liters of fuel per minute at a speed of between 220 to 560 km per hour. The Brazilian C390s have a defensive suite including radar and missile warning receivers, chaff and flare dispensers produced by Albit Systems. In 2011, Embraer announced that it would develop a civilian KC390 with an extended fuselage. Brazil, Hungary, the Netherlands and Portugal have already ordered the aircraft. Argentina, Chile, Colombia and Czechia are the close candidates for the KC-390. Also, Peru and the United Arab Emirates expressed their intention to acquire the aircraft. The three-person crew of the C-390 consists of a pilot, co-pilot and loadmaster. The aircraft has a length of 35.2 meters, a wingspan of 35.05 meters and a height of 11.84 meters. The maximum takeoff weight of the C-390 is about 87 tons. The power plant consists of two 139.4 kN IAE V2500 E5 turbofan engines. Its top speed is 988 km per hour, while its cruising speed is 870 km per hour. The service ceiling is about 11,000 meters, in other words, 36,000 feet. The range of the aircraft is 2,820 km with 23 ton cargo and 2,110 km with 26 ton cargo. Let's begin our analysis. Once upon a time, the French-German joint military transport aircraft, the C-160 Transal, dared to challenge the mighty C-130 Hercules. But the C-130 beat the C-160 globally. The Hercules was more reliable and capable than the Transal. Also, the production capacity of the US Lockheed company was much higher than its European rivals. During the first Cold War conditions, the production of aircraft in large numbers at low prices was possible for a US aviation company. They were the fact that made the C-130 more affordable. Besides, when the US Air Force took more capable Hercules variants into its service, Washington gave the older models to other allied countries at low prices or even free. The C-160 could never compete with these advantages. At first glance, the situation for the C-390 may seem remarkably similar to this story, but it's not. First of all, it is a different world. Today, no US aviation company can produce aircraft in large numbers at low prices due to its high-margin profit-oriented policy. Embraer estimated that the world would need 695 military transport aircraft to replace the aging ones in the next decade. So we can say that the Lockheed Martin cannot produce enough Super Hercules to fulfill this requirement. This company has the potential to increase its production capacity thanks to its technological and financial superiority. But it is not an economically feasible way. And today, Washington has no luxury of giving its allies surplus transport aircraft at low price or even free to replace their aging C-130s. Besides, the unit cost of the C-390 is considerably lower than the C-130J its biggest rival in the market. Also, it can carry over 7 tons more cargo than the Super Hercules. And it is faster. 
The Millennium's IAEV 2500 turbofans are also used by the Airbus 320. It makes maintenance and finding spare parts easy. Even though the C-130J has its own advantages such as range, widespread global service support and the political aid of Washington, we should see that there is still a great open space for Embraer. But can we say that a shining future awaits for the C-390? It is still too soon to claim that. Presumably, the USA won't mind losing some small markets, but it won't hesitate to fight hard for the bigger ones. After all, we can say that France and Sweden expressed their acquisition intentions for C-390 as a type of bribery. These countries intended to make their offers to Brazil more attractive for the FX2 program. After Brasilia chose the Gripen, Paris and Stockholm immediately changed their direction. But Sweden, which has preferred to perform a midlife upgrade program for its aging C-130 fleet, may still choose the C-390 in the future. The vision of Embraer is the key to the current and potential success of the C-390. Recently, many new aviation companies have joined the competition in the market. They generally prefer fancy and ambitious jet fighter development programs. Maybe the experience of another Brazilian defense company, Engesa, has enlightened Embraer's way. Engesa developed and sold many successful armored vehicles in the 1970s. It was one of the major producers in this area. Encouraged by the success, the company developed the main battle tank in the 1980s, challenging its major Western rivals, and the ambitious attempt resulted in Engesa's bankruptcy. Embraer has developed and produced many successful commercial and military aircraft types. The major Western aviation companies lost their interest in these type of planes a long time ago. This policy has made Embraer highly successful so far. Besides, unlike the A400M program, which has caused many debates and problems, the industrial cooperation approach of the C390 is proceeding smoothly and fruitfully. The C390 is the product of a visionary policy of Embraer. It can compete with the C130J, the strongest rival in the market. It is affordable and capable. As the weapon detective, we analyze that Embraer will generously reap a harvest of this successful project soon. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all the likes, comments and shares.